This video highlights the steps involved in installing the Deco Water Pump Kit WP95304K1A on a 2001 Subaru Forester with a 2.5 liter H4 engine, which features a single overhead cam. Related Deco kits that work with this application are the Component Kit 84105 and the Belt Kit 95304K1. The Deco Water Pump Kit includes timing belt number 95304, one tensioner, two backside idler pulleys, an improved tensioner bracket, water pump, and a Deco Easy Gauge for checking clearance. As usual, instructions are included in the kit, which also includes a reference to the Subaru Service Bulletin number 02-93-04. These instructions should be followed exactly. For safety's sake, the key should be removed from the ignition, and the positive battery cable should be disconnected. To provide access to the accessory and timing belt drives, remove the electric fans located behind the radiator, then drain the coolant. After removing the tensioning devices from the accessory drives, remove the belts and inspect for any damage or unusual wear. Also inspect the pulleys for damage or bearing wear. Remove and inspect the bolt from the crankshaft pulley on the front of the crankshaft. Next, pull the crankshaft pulley off the crankshaft with a side-to-side -side motion. Alignment is maintained with a key. Inspect it for any damage that would make a replacement necessary. Remove all the bolts from the plastic timing belt covers, then slide the first one forward off the engine. Now slide the second cover off the engine. A visual inspection indicates some prior minor damage in the area of an idler pulley. Since this is an interference engine, it's fortunate that a drive inspection and replacement is being done before any catastrophic failure occurred. Now it's time to set the timing marks. Rotate the crankshaft so that the green alignment line on the pulley is exactly at the 12 o'clock position. With a silver paint pen, draw a line across the belt aligning with the green line. In this close-up, the green line can be seen more clearly, along with the silver pen line. Notice that the line is in perfect alignment with the mark on the reluctor ring behind the pulley. Looking at the camshaft pulley on the driver's side, locate the notch at the 12 o'clock position and draw another silver paint line across the belt. That line matches up with the notch in the cam cover bracket. Now, we're ready to remove the timing belt. Following the instructions, remove the passenger side idler pulley first. Before removing the second idler pulley, draw an arrow on the belt to indicate the direction of rotation. Now remove the second driver side idler pulley. Once both these idlers have been removed, the timing belt can be easily slid off the drive and removed. Take care that the crankshaft does not rotate during this process. The next step is the removal of the actuator tensioner. Remove the bolt and the tensioner, being careful to retain the two washers on the bolt on each side of the tensioner. In the instructions, installation step three says to check that the protrusion of the push rod from the body is between one fifth to one quarter of an inch. This refers to the distance from the top edge of the push rod to the metal collar from which the push rod protrudes. This measurement is explained in the diagram in the instructions. If for some reason you have chosen not to use the Deco kit that includes the hardware, you should test the actuator in an arbor press to ensure that there is proper resistance on the downward stroke of the push rod. There should be about 60 pounds of force to depress the plunger, and you should see a quick rebound after the force is removed. A new actuator is being used here for illustration. But if the old actuator does not meet these performance parameters, a replacement is necessary. Insert a piece of welding rod or other appropriate pin to hold the push rod in the compressed position to allow for proper installation. A replacement may also be necessary for the bracket to which the actuator tensioner is bolted, especially if it is a factory bracket prior to 2005. The Subaru Service Bulletin number 02-93-04 dated November 5, 2004, addresses this problem. An improved design was used in production during the 2004 model year Forester and the 2005 model year Legacy and Impreza. Here is the bottom of the original factory bracket, showing the extensive wear on the hardened pin. 
The new and improved bracket has reinforcing ribs on both the outside and the inside of the bracket, as compared to the flat design of this section of the original bracket. The top of the new bracket features a wider cross section for greater stability. This wider cross section on the new bracket uses a longer bolt, which also contributes to increased stability. We're now ready to install the new tensioner. Here is a top view of the pin that is holding the push rod in the compressed position as mentioned earlier. Align it with the engine block, insert the bolt, and tighten. Using a torque wrench, tighten the bolt to spec, which is 29 foot-pounds. Prior to installing the belt, verify that there is sufficient range of free movement of the tensioner arm. Also check that the push rod is making contact with the hardened pin in the bracket. Here's a shot of the belt after it has been correctly installed. Note that the arrow on the belt is pointing in the correct clockwise direction, and the white lines on the belt are lined up with the top dead center marks on the camshaft pulley on the driver's side and the crankshaft pulley. Ensure that the timing belt is taut between the sprockets on the non-tensioned side. Once the belt is installed, remove the pin holding the push rod in the compressed position and allow the tensioner to exert force on the belt. The push rod should be in direct contact with the hardened pin in the bracket. Next, following the instruction sheet, rotate the crankshaft to complete turns clockwise and make sure the lines on the belt all return to their top dead center positions. The next step is to install the Deco Easy Gauge on engines that have a protective guard over the crank sprocket. Normally, this is seen on manual transmission vehicles, but could possibly be found on engines installed with automatic transmissions at some point of the vehicle's life. The Easy Gauge installs between the crankshaft sprocket and the protective guard directly above it. The clearance spec here is 20 to 60 thousandths of an inch. The bolts on each side of the guard can now be torqued to the 78 to 95 inch pound spec. After torquing to spec, make sure you remove the easy gauge. The final installation step in the instructions is to oil and reinstall the crankshaft pulley bolt and do an initial tightening to 33 foot pounds, then a final torque to 126 to 134 foot pounds, checking that the bolt turns 65 to 75 degrees. Carefully reinstall all components in reverse order of how they were removed. Next, connect the battery and start the engine. In this video, the covers were left off to show that pulley surface can be seen both behind and in front of the belt, which indicates superior centered tracking. It is recommended that you check for belt alignment along its path around the drive after starting and running a few seconds. With the engine off, this visual check may be made by removing the left or driver's side timing cover. If belt tracking is off-center, you will need to remove the rest of the cover and determine the root cause. This would be an abnormal situation if new components were installed. Failing components that were not replaced, such as idler bearings or a worn tensioner, would often be the cause.